and welcome back to Mom's Plain in Life. As you know, in June, I started a financial series just to touch on a couple of topics that I think are very relevant for the times that we're living in. When we turn the news on, there is always something going on and the markets are fluctuating. And so we want to know how does this affect me and my decisions and what I'm doing with my personal life and my personal finances. Today, I wanted to bring to you the topic of home ownership. Should you buy a home right now in the midst of everything that we have going on? going to go with you through the process of deciding of whether or not you should buy a home in 2020. I do want to reiterate that while I am an attorney, I am not a financial advisor. And these are all the things that I am going through literally in real time as we speak. And so I wanted to take you through the process of me deciding whether or not I should buy a home in 2020. The first thing that I had to ask myself is, is this the right time for me to buy? So as you know, in the midst of the pandemic, there are millions of Americans who have lost their jobs. That means that they don't have steady income. This may not be the right time for you to buy. Even with the interest rates being as low as they are, it doesn't matter if you can't afford to make the mortgage. Also, when determining whether this is the right time for you to buy, ask yourself, do you have an emergency fund? Do you have three to six months of cash saved up in case something happens? With the pandemic, you can see just how quick life can happen. And so we can all be out of a job in literally a split. But if you have an emergency fund, you have something of a cushion to help you through those tough times. Also, I have done a video on how to spend your emergency fund if that is your case. If you're not necessarily looking to buy a home, but you are now in a time where you need to actually spend that emergency fund. So again, I will put that link into the description box. So that will give you a little bit more clarity on how to actually go about spending your emergency fund. Another thing you want to look at is your debt to credit ratio. And so what I mean by that is how much do you owe from all of your bills from student loans, car note, credit cards versus how much you have available to spend. What is your credit card limit? Do you know? That is something that you definitely wanna find out before you even start searching for a home because that is an indicator to a lender on whether or not they actually want to loan you the money for the purchase of a house. If your debt to credit ratio is high, then you're not gonna get approved. And so the best course of action is to actually go back, pay off all your debts, Make sure you are debt free before you start searching for a home because the only thing you're doing is adding another bill. And that is, you know, especially during these times, would not be the wisest thing. And so you just want to make sure that all your coins are right. Now, this is a question that I have received from a lot of my friends. It's how do my student loans affect me buying a house? Well, if you remember from a couple of months ago, the government allowed for student loans to be in forbearance for six months from the time of the pandemic. And so many of us have our loans in forbearance. Well, guess what? That means you can't qualify for the FHA loan. So what is the FHA loan? It is the Federal Housing Administration loan that allows you to put down less of a down payment. In fact, you only have to put down 3.5% on the down payment of your house versus the traditional uh, loans where you have to put at least 15 to 20% of a down payment. So essentially, you don't have to have as much equity in your home in order to have home ownership. But as I said, you don't qualify for that loan when your loans are in forbearance. And so you wanna make sure that when you're buying a home, that your loans are not in forbearance. So the best thing for you to do right now, since you are not having to pay student loans, might be to wait, stack your coins, and then in September, go ahead and start looking for your house. That would eliminate a huge hurdle. You would be able to save more money towards your dream home, and it would give you more of a plan in terms of balancing your student loans 
and balancing having to pay a mortgage. The third thing that you want to ask yourself when you are trying to decide whether you should buy a house is how is my credit? This is especially important right now while we're in the midst of this economic downturn because a lot of lenders have tightened their credit standards. That means that if you have bad credit, you can pretty much forget about the credit companies loaning to you. And in fact, a lot of mortgage lenders are stopping people at the closing table from being able to buy their homes. Specifically, they are even looking at your job stability. And so if you've lost your job in the midst of you trying to buy a house and you don't have steady income, they're not going to approve you. And I know that is especially tough for entrepreneurs. And so I want to make you aware that you might have a tougher time trying to buy a house right now. So the best thing for you might be to wait it out. Like I told you, many of the big banks are requiring you to have at least a 700 or more credit score to even consider you for a loan. So if that's not you, you can use this time again to build up your credit and to really get where you wanna to be to put you in the best financial decision to buy a home. I can tell you that while the interest rates are good, they may not be enough for you to go ahead and jump into buying a home right now. There are so many other things that go into buying a home beyond the credit rates. Things that you might not necessarily be thinking about is, well, how are you going to pay movers to actually move your furniture? Since we are in a time of social distancing, it might be harder for you to actually get movers or the price of the movers might go up drastically. But another thing might be the property taxes where you are trying to move. Make sure you look up to see how the property taxes are in that specific area because even though you might have a low mortgage payment, you might have absorbent property taxes. And so it makes it just as expensive to live in a specific area. Another thing you want to think about is you're going to want to furnish that nice new home with tons of TJ Maxx hauls and home goods hauls, right? And so you are going to have to have money to actually decorate and get your nice new home the way you want it. If these things are not necessarily at your reach right now, that's okay. All you have to do is wait it out get your finances in order, and then jump into it. So once you go through that whole checklist, and I know it's only three things, but those three things are very involved, you can really figure out whether this is something that you want to do. Another thing that I like to ask my friends is, how do you feel about this purchase? Is this something that makes you feel good inside? Or does it feel forced? What is your true gut feeling on this purchase? And a lot of times your gut feeling will guide you in the right direction. So I hope that you use these tips. I hope that you find them helpful and that you can apply them to your current situation. And again, I think during this time of an economic downturn, it's important to kind of shift our lens and how we look at certain things. Everything happens at a certain time. It happens in God's time, not our time. The biggest thing that we can learn from going through these questions is that while it might not be your time to purchase a house, it's never too early to go ahead and see the steps or the things you need to do to get your finances in order. Even once you get your finances in order, you will be buying the house on God's time. So that means when the time is right for you, it will be right for you. I hope that you have been able to enjoy this video and that it gives you clarity and direction on how to go about thinking whether you should buy a house. The one thing I can tell you is that there will always be houses available. So there is no need to rush. We are not rushing by any stretch of the imagination. So I will go on this journey with you. I am 100% sure. And I will document what it's like to actually buy a house on my YouTube channel. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I can't wait to get out more content to you. If you are enjoying my content, I want you to go ahead and subscribe below and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any updates on my channel. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I always answer my comments and I love interacting with you. So until next time, this is mom splaining life.